Greetings, everyone. Today, I'm going to do a short demonstration in learning how to draw from observation. We're going to start with line drawing. Line drawing is a great way for anyone, beginner or advanced, to get better at developing their observation and drawing skills. Line drawing consists of drawing the outer lines of an object to start, then moving to the more inner details. When making a line drawing, you should spend the majority of the time looking at the object, not at your paper. This will improve your hand-eye coordination and create a better understanding of what the object looks like, not what you think it looks like. The goal of this exercise is to carefully look at the size of one part in comparison to another, making visual relationships. Observational drawing is a skill that anyone can learn to do but it requires slow and thoughtful observation as well as continued practice. So to start, today I'm going to be using a Sharpie so that you can see my example clearly. But I would recommend starting with something like a pencil where you can be able to make lighter marks and lines. It's really helpful to keep your hand loose and to start with light lines. Once you like the placement of the lines and it looks um, more or less accurate, then you can go over it and embolden it. So let's get started. All right, so in starting to draw this object, if you're just beginning, I would always start with a simple, rigid form. Um, I have chosen a coffee cup. This has minimal information so that it's um, a way for you to start to feel confident that you can draw what you see. As you get better, you can start to create um, drawings with using objects with more information, like maybe a pair of scissors or a salt shaker. Um, and once you feel like you get better, then you can keep putting the pieces together with objects with more information. I think of drawing from observation, like putting together a puzzle. It's fairly easy to put together a puzzle with only uh, you know, 50 pieces, but it's a lot harder to put together a puzzle with a thousand pieces. So let's get started. As I mentioned, in starting out, we wanna start with the outer lines. I'm going to start with where the handle meets the mug. I'm not making one line, but I'm starting to kind of uh, be sketchy and moving around the object in a way where I can start to really look and put together the pieces of information that I'm seeing. Looking at the negative space where the cup and the handle is, it can be a helpful tool to create that um, space that is pretty accurate. And then you can go in and tie in the positive space to make it um, actually look pretty realistic. As you're sketching, if you're using a pencil, um, start out working pretty lightly and then you can be able to, like I said, embolden it once you feel better about where those marks are. Now, you can use uh, your tool um, to measure things, but it's not a mathematical calculation. You're really just trying to see if this looks about the same. So I can say, okay, is if the bottom to that part is from there, then that's about the same. I notice on my drawing that they're pretty similar. Um, from here is a straight line going over, and then from here is an ellipse, so I can start to create that um, feeling of the shape, and then once I like that line, I can go and embolden it. Then I can move down the mug. From here, I can start to see that, how big that opening of the cup is, and then I can go and make that. So once I have all these outer lines, then I can start to move to the inner tones, um, which is really helpful to squint your eyes. And so if you squint, it removes the middle tone and you can really see a lot more of the lights and darks. What I notice is some of the darkest parts are in the handle and on the right side of the mug. I also know that the way the, the form is moving is this way and it's also moving this way. It's more flat than round and so I can start to make the marks going in that direction.
creating the tone will help the mug become more volumetric and less flat. And so now that I have the main structure, I can move on to the shadows. Now the lights hanging over this table, um, there's more than one light. That's why we're seeing multiple shadows. Then I can go in the same way the I put the paper here so you could see the shadow underneath it. And you can also see where the paper cuts through the object so that it looks like it's sitting on a surface. It's not just floating. So you can see within a couple minutes, I've gone from a blank piece of paper to, you can see a drawing that looks fairly accurate to what we're looking at. Now I noticed that um, the drawing of my cup and the actual cup are a little bit different. The drawing's a little more long and the cup's a little shorter. So that's something that I could adapt if I were to draw it with a pencil where I could go over those lines, erase them, and then embolden the lines that look more accurate. After you do, um, a drawing and you feel like you're getting the hang of it, you could move on to an object with more information, um, like a scissor. And so when I'm drawing this scissor, I'm gonna start the same way. I'm going to start with the most outer lines. But because there's more information, I'm going to start kind of making little tick marks to where I'm placing where I think that the next piece will go. That'll help me get back to the um, point of origin so I know that that's where it is. And then I can, I'm not gonna do it yet so I can modify it to see if it is actually there. Now, if you're wondering, how do you make something feel like it's curved, like where the handle is? That's really just looking at what you see. If you see something, then you start to make a mark there. And if you don't see it, then it just goes away and then you don't draw it. You don't have to overcomplicate your thinking. It's really just noticing about what you see and what you don't and trying to translate those relationships of what you see onto your paper. So I noticed that's a little different, so I'm just gonna change that. Still moving my drawing tool in kind of a light and sketchy way just to really see if it's there and that then I could start to make some corrections and start to move in with that tone. The goal is not to get it perfect. The goal is to practice and so that you can just start to get better at something that may not feel so familiar. So then once you have the object to look um, fairly accurate and realistic. Notice that it only takes a couple minutes. Then you could move on to um, kind of the shadows. So I could start here. And then if we wanted to, we could see that it's on a sheet of paper. So now within a couple minutes, I already have um, something that you can clearly tell is a scissor. If I were to move on to another object, you can move on to something like a salt shaker. Now when you have something that looks um, like a square or rectangle, 
then I would just really keep looking and noticing where these points are. It's not about um, making sure that it's mathematically perfect. It's mostly really just putting the information down and trying to translate those scale relationships to the best of your ability. I hope that this was helpful. Don't get distracted at, um, like if you don't like a couple lines, then starting over. Um, it's always hard, the hardest part is at the beginning and that if you just have five lines, once you have 20 or 30 lines, you won't notice those five lines as much. Um, keep it up and I hope you have fun.